You are watching the A-10 on ESPN. Loyola University Chicago is proud to present NCAA Men's Soccer. This afternoon from a scorching hot Loyola Soccer Park in Rogers Park, Chicago, we bring you the 25th ranked Bowling Green Falcons in town to take on the newest member of the A-10, the Loyola Ramblers. Hi, everybody. Alongside former Rambler midfielder Ryan Walker, I am Scott Sudikoff. Welcome to this afternoon's broadcast. It, Ryan, looking forward to a good one here. Bowling Green, they've been to the NCAA tournament two consecutive seasons, and Loyola, they're picked to be fifth in the A-10 in their first year in the conference. Yeah, Scott, I'm very excited to uh, be here for this one today. I think it's going to be a great game between two great teams. A lot of pedigree in the last few seasons from both these programs, so I'm excited to see what happens. You see what the A-10 teams have done so far in the first games of the season. St. Louis is the preseason favorite in the Atlantic 10. URI, VCU, Fordham, the other teams ahead of Loyola in the preseason poll. Let's take a look more at Bowling Green here. I mentioned they made the NCAA tournament for a second consecutive season and got a very nice win against Louisville last year as well. Yeah, they are certainly a great program. They're returning plenty of letter winners from last season. 62% of their goal scoring is back, 78% of the assists. So this is a team that has tasted success last year and is hungry for more this year. So I'm excited to see how they play today against Loyola. And the Ramblers, 1-0 on this season, coming off a 9-5-2 season a year ago. Can be very dominant here at home and very dominant when they get a couple the goals on the board yeah I mean they've made this place a fortress over the last few years um, and I'm again excited to see how they continue that onwards during this game all right that is our matchup here this afternoon the Mac and the A-10 Bowling Green and Loyola Chicago and it's coming up live next for you on the A-10 on ESPN Welcome back to Loyola Soccer Park in Chicago, where it is in the mid-80s. It'll probably get close to 90 before this day is done. And some cloud cover, but the sun is shining as we get ready for the second game of the season between the Ramblers and Bowling Green. This is starting lineup for the Falcons coming off of a 0-0 draw Friday at DePaul. Their starting lineup has just one difference from that Friday game. Amir Didich getting a start. And a guy to look out for is number 17, Alberto Anaya, the team's top returning scorer. Yeah, Anaya, he was a freshman of the year last year in the MAC. Uh, very skilled technical player in the midfield at 5'5". Five five. Yep. I'm excited to watch him play. Five goals and four assists last year. And there's the lineup for Loyola as they uh, go with the same lineup that they had actually one change in the lineup. Jason Ibarra is getting the start in place of uh, Mark Torres, it looks like, in the starting 11. But Billy Hensi is who we want to talk about here. Uh, a two-goal performance on Friday. Yeah, he really just picked up, picked up right where he left off last season, continuing his impressive run of games, and I am very excited to watch him play today. He was actually my, uh, my mentee when I was a senior at Loyola, and he was a freshman, so it'll be exciting to watch him play, and it's been awesome to see him improve over the years. You can see down at the far side of the screen right there, it's Simon Gilson making the start for the second consecutive game for Loyola. Did not play any time last season as Marcel Campman played the entire season end-to-end -end, every single minute in goal for Loyola. Jilson on Friday allowed a goal, had a couple of saves, and he actually gave way in the final 13 minutes to Alex Grow. Ramblers in the white today. Bowling Green in the orange uniforms. And we got a packed house here. At Loyola Soccer Park, hustle to hoin the event. Students walking about a mile and a half, two miles from campus to get to the field today. The stands themselves are full. So we have fans also sitting behind right now what is the uh, Bowling Green netminder's goal. So I'm sure they'll be nice, but <laughs> they may have a few words for Brendan Graves and goal for Bowling Green. I'm sure it'll be a fun first half for Brendan Graves back there. Here's Andrew Mitchell, center back for the Ramblers, now a senior from the Woodlands, Texas. Jilson, graduate goalie, graduate student. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see kind of how these two teams test each other early on. I'm sure, again, it's an early early game, early season. 
still probably some some nerves, some energy. Alex Moscow able to win the ball in the attacking third, but it's cleared out by the Falcons as we work here in the second minute. Bowling Green preseason number 25 ranking. They were 11-6-3 overall last season, ending their season in the second round of the NCAA tournament, the first time they had advanced in the tournament since 1997. Yeah, they've put together quite a few uh, good seasons the last few years, and so I'm sure that's something, again, that they're continuing to try to build on, continue to draw out that success and uh, get back to the tournament for back-to-back -back years. They are favored in the MAC to get to the NCAA tournament for a third consecutive year, the preseason number one team in the conference. It is worth noting, too, that the MAC actually had some shakeup in it uh, in the soccer landscape this year. No more West Virginia, who was a powerhouse in that conference. And so this is a very, very important early season test for Bowling Green um, because I think their conference may have gotten a little weaker. Loyola moved to the A-10, uh, what is considered a stronger conference. So Bowling Green is definitely going to show up for this game today because a, a big win here could be an important early statement. Ramblers on Friday in the 4-1 win against Bucknell. Scored a couple of goals in the first half, a couple more in the second half. Had a 4-0 lead before Bucknell scored late in the 78th minute of play. Mitchell looping it towards the halfway line. Second ball won by Bowling Green. It went to Lacasco. With the Ramblers back line, back in control. Lucas Ender, a center back from Germany, a junior. And now the ball here. On this near side, went by Brian Silver, who is a new member of this Ramblers team, a transfer from Notre Dame, where he play, appeared in 24 games for the Fighting Irish. John Gates trying to get around the corner there. Defense by Joey Apanonu. Yeah, that was great defense by Joey. Really uh, was able to intercept that well and hold off John Gates. A 2021 All-Mac second team performer, Apanonu. For the Falcons. And this ball into the box and picked up by Simon Jilson. Of course, we have not mentioned him yet today. Rambler, new head coach, Steve Bodie, first year. Was an assistant coach the last two years up in Milwaukee with the Marquette women's program. Of course, spent 2019 here as an assistant for the men's team. So already with some familiarity with this program. Yeah, I mean, anytime you bring a, a new head coach into a new program, it's going to be tough. There's going to be a, an adjustment period, but it definitely helps that Bodie was here in 2019 when the team had some great success making it to the, the first round of the NCAA tournament uh, playing Kentucky. So he's been around the team. He knows the players. He was there when they had success, and he's hoping to now in the head coaching role take them back to that same level. We got a stoppage here with 41.08 on the clock. Looks like... The officials had a little cut. Oh, a headset issue. Okay. Our referee does, though, have a band aid on his uh, cheek. So I'm wondering if that was being uh, attended to as well as uh, play resumes here, entering into the fifth minute. Conversely, Bowling Green, 14th year head coach Eric Nichols actually just uh, signed a multi year extension, which will keep him in Bowling Green, Ohio, until at least December of 2024, not to be confused with Bowling Green, Kentucky, the home of Western Kentucky University. His record, 106, 135, 35 draws, but getting this program to the NCAA tournament back-to-back -back years and the first appearances since 1997. Gates to make life difficult for any defense. And we saw him score in the first half on Friday. Had a long ball from Lucas Ender that Gates stayed on side, used his speed, and chipped it by the keeper. First opportunity here for Bowling Green at a shot that gets blocked. The shot attempt by Jensen Lacasco, one of the tri captains, played all 90 minutes on Friday for Bowling Green at DePaul. Either team went too deep 
on their bench opening day on Friday. This is Kale Nichols. Yeah, I think early on both these teams trying to play similar styles. They both seem like they like to keep the ball on the ground, not too uh, reluctant to just dump it long. So it'll be interesting to see how that pattern of play carries out over the rest of the game. Two similar minded teams who can assert themselves more. Bowling Green in the attacking third, can't get the ball in the box. Juggled and controlled once again by the Falcons. Bowling Green looking to pin Loyola back here. Eli Shope with a cross near the penalty spot. Trying to get in there with the header was Nathan Masters. Ball at the top of the box. And the defense blocking that attempt. And now here's a chance to break for Loyola. Trying to spring. Someone up top there, Alex Mosco. Might have been a handball there on Andrew Schweiner. Tereus, by the way, is in the starting lineup. May have been a, a late change. So Tereus is in the lineup, and Ibarra, the one not in the starting lineup. So it ended up being the same starting 11 for Loyola as Friday. Throw in coming from Eli Shope, a senior. He's from Bowling Green. Ball switched here for the Falcons. Amir Didich. Diagonal now to the near side, volleyed by Shope towards the end line, trying to get a cross off. Was Kusumano, goes all the way to the other end and kept so in. Kale Nichols was able to save that, keep the play alive. And that's Sergi Martinez, who can't win the Falcons a corner kick. It'll be a goal kick instead for Simon Jilson. Think if I was Eric Nichols, I'd be happy with the, the start my team has put on the field here. I mean, they seem to be controlling the run of play. They've kind of got Loyola on the back foot. Some of these diagonal long balls that you're seeing some of the mm -hmm. center backs hit are really opening up the field for the Falcons and uh, seems to be causing some problems for Loyola's back line. If you're Steve Bodie and Loyola, what early adjustments maybe do you make now to combat that? I think you got to step up the field a little higher, maybe not give those center backs as much time on the ball. Um, they've already proven that they can pick out quite a pass when given time and space. So maybe you try to try to step to them a little bit more, make them a little bit more uncomfortable and don't allow them to get their head up to play those diagonals. Shope was dispossessed from the ball nicely by Chereas. Good hold up play there. Overrunning it was Fabian Becerra. He's able to win it back though. See Chereas getting to the corner of the box as the Ramblers try to get the ball in close. And I like this from Loyola, you know, slow the game down. You haven't really had much of the ball in these first five, 10 minutes. That's not a good giveaway though. Turned over in the midfield. Ball too short intended for Shope. Stepping up and taking it was Silver, the graduate transfer from Notre Dame. And that'll be picked up by Brendan Graves, who has started both games thus far this season. In fact, he started the final six games of last season, which included the two NCAA tournament games. This is his ninth career appearance and start. He's allowed 12 goals with 21 saves and has had three shutouts in those prior eight oh. starts. And a big collision, Shope. Play continuing on here. Let's see. It looks like Brian Silver then <laughs> next challenge left his foot in a little late there. Lucky not to have the referee see that one. Through ball attempt to the edge of the box. And that rolls over the end line. Looked like last touch by the Falcons and that is the case. Another goal kick coming for Simon Jilson. And the Ramblers picked to be fifth in the Atlantic 10 in their inaugural year in the A-10 conference. That's pretty good respect for a team entering a new league based off what they've done in the Missouri Valley Conference. And again, it's a very talented uh, A-10. Yeah, certainly. I mean, it's a very deep conference, one with lots and lots of talented programs. And like you said, it's, it's a massive amount of respect to what Loyola has done over the last four or five years in the NBC to tab them with a, a fifth place ranking right off the go. St. Louis, Rhode Island, VCU, and Fordham, the four teams ahead of the Ramblers in the preseason poll. I think St. Louis is the one that really stands out mm -hmm. there. 
Cross to the top of the six and nicely defended. That is Lucas Ender, second team all MVC a year ago. Helped good. to break that play up. Very good defending there by Lucas Ender. Got his body in between the man and the ball and was able to uh, pick off what looked like a very dangerous cross. And that foul will be whistled against Julian Cisneros. I see a little too much contact with Kale Nichols. It'll lead to a bowling green free kick now. And then it looks like a little, little too much communication with the ref afterwards, too. Seems like the ref's not going to be tolerating much of that this game. Is trying to put his foot down on it early. Mentioned Bowling Green in the top. Returning nine of their starters from last season. 62% of the team's goals and 78% of the team's assists. They did lose Jacob Erlinson, who was drafted by the Columbus Crew, an all-MAC first-team performer. His brother is in the starting lineup on this team, Josh Erlinson. Yeah, I mean, this is certainly a Bowling Green team that has high expectations for this season. Free kick goes through. Good Skips. save by Simon. Yeah, and Simon Jilson just getting the hand on it, so it came through cleanly, hopping near the top of the six-yard area, and Jilson getting the left hand on it. It's a tough play to make when you have traffic in front of you and normally you're expecting some contact on the way through. Exactly, and that was a lovely delivery on that cross and it, it bounced in that, that tough spot for goalies, right? When it's right in front of them, they don't know if they can come grab it and claim it and so Simon made a good play on the ball there. Anaya goes short on the corner kick. Slides to keep it alive. Sergi Martinez to the far side. Volley attempt was unsuccessful and cleared out Gates. And now Becerra, who will be all over the field, working on this left side, trying to get around Apononu. They wrestle a bit. Becerra stays strong, and as the same can be said for Apononu. That's going to be a fun a, battle to watch. That's exactly all night. what I'm about to say. That was a fun <laughs> battle there. Both guys a little handsy, a little contact, but it was pretty even. Yeah, and Fabian got the best of him in the beginning, but. Uh, in the end, ended up going over the top and fouling him. So the foul and a free kick will be taken by Brendan Graves. Bowling Green had an above 500, above 500 home record a year ago. It's six away record at six five and one. Get back to that in a moment. Is Eli Shope Kusumano now looking for a cross, dropping it back to the penalty spot, and only a rambler there waiting for it. I believe that was Schweinert. Andrew Schweinert, graduate student from Brookfield, Wisconsin, was in the right spot. Yeah, it's a tough period of the game for Loyola. Again, you've seen quite a few dangerous crosses coming into the box down this right side from Bowling Green. They're kind of having to fend off quite a bit of pressure early on here. I would just love to see someone get the ball and maybe get their head up and just slow the game down for Loyola right now. I think everything is maybe slightly too rushed, and uh, they're paying the price of the defensive end because of it. Cisneros had it deflected out, so it's a Rambler throw. As we enter the 15th minute of play, no score. Ramblers and Falcons in this second game of the 2022 season for each side. Alongside former Rambler midfielder Ryan Walker, I'm Scott Sudikoff. It's a high 80s right now with the sun partly shining, we'll say. Some cloud cover, but... It is toasty, and on the field today, there will be hydration breaks around the 22 minutes remaining mark in each half. As there should be. <laughs> we need them up here as well. <laughs> yeah. We'll get a one-minute break, and we'll be allowed to go to the other room that's next door to us, the press room that has the AC running. <laughs> We're shut off from it right now, so we'll take that one-minute break as well. Yeah, much needed for everyone out here today. I mean, <laughs> there's a packed, packed stands. Yeah, one, Great would environment. one would think maybe that this weather, how hot it is, would stop some of the students from making the trek here, but that is not the case. The stands are full, and students also sitting right now behind the Bowling Green goal on the left side of your screen, so it is a packed house, and 
Yeah, you got to give props to Loyola for every year doing a fantastic job with their Hustle the Hoyne event. They get people out, they get students involved, and it's a great taste of, uh, of what the men's soccer team can do. Gates angling the header towards Billy Hensey. Haven't said his name much yet here. That looked like a dangerously high kick, but there was thankfully no contact. Loyola ball. Andrew Mitchell is settled into that center back spot, making his 33rd career start and 35th appearance. Remember his first game here against Vermont back in 2019. He scored a goal in his first home appearance. Good win right there by Andy Mitchell. Loyola seems to be kind of playing their way into the game, minute by minute. Something developing here. Good step up by Cisneros, but better job on the ball by Kale Nichols to move through it. Nichols will drop it back. Shot attempt blocked. Yeah, it was great 1v1 defending there by Julian Cisneros. Cisneros now. Curls it towards the middle, intercepted there by the Falcons, Jensen Lacasco. Looks like Julian got away with one there. It was a pretty obvious shirt pull, and the ref didn't seem to see it. Looks like the Ramblers will be making a change momentarily. Oscar Dueso is stretching out at midfield. Dueso coming off a terrific junior season. Where he was all MVC first team with five goals and seven assists. And he's coming in right now. Dueso in and Moscow out. Yeah, and that substitution I think speaks to what I was saying, trying to calm the game down for Loyola Oscar. Dueso is a big hold up forward. Um, I think he came in for Alex Moscow there, who's a little bit more of a, a speedster, someone that's gonna run in behind. So I think Steve Bode is looking at the game and just trying to get someone up there that can maybe Slow the game down, connect a few passes, and, and get Loyola into this a little bit more. Casco Again, one of those diagonal, diagonal balls. Ball, yep. Into the box here. That cross goes off the hands of Jilson, and he's able to cover it up. While another Falcon was bearing down on him in the vicinity there. Great quick reaction there by Simon Jilson. Cusabano was right there. and Could have had a chance to get that loose ball, but Jilson was quick to retrieve it. Also had Brian Silver was in a good position as well to help out his keeper. That was a good ball by Kale Nichols too, getting to the end line, whipping across through the box. Definitely challenged Simon there. Ramblers will be making a, another substitution at the next opportunity. Looks like Quinton Blair, a sophomore who made his first career appearance on Friday. That's uh, upcoming here. Blair has not yet gone in. There's a cross into the six, and then that's going to be a goal kick. That's sliding. Trying to get good contact on it. Couldn't quite see who played that ball, but again, another excellent delivery into a dangerous area and in and around the PK spot. There's uh, Kusumano. And there is Quentin Blair, sophomore from Shawnee, Kansas. Played 49 minutes in his debut on uh, Friday. Goal kick from Simon Jilson. He's making his 12th career start now. Played a good amount of time in the spring 2021 season where he had 10 games of action and eight starts, but did not play in the fall last year with Marcel Campman in between the pipes for every minute of the year. And the play continuing on here. Tereus. Great ball there by Tereus. Leading Gates. Gates and a slide tackle from behind knocks it out. It will be the first corner kick for Loyola today. That was better from Loyola. You know, Mark Tereus got a great ball around the corner. Gates was in a position to go one-on-one -on -one and take advantage of the pace that he has, and he almost was able to round the corner on that defender. Torres really helps fill the spot that Gian Magno had held for the last couple of seasons. Kind of a do-everything in the middle midfield and 
for Reyes now in his senior year and his third year with the Ramblers after transferring from Merrimack. Billy Hensey on the corner kick, coming off his fourth career brace on Friday, looking to feed someone here. The outswinging ball. Yeah, that's a name we haven't really said too much today so far, so I'd love to see him get a little more involved. There's Sarah working in the left corner, marked by Eli Shope. A little two-man game there with Blair. This will be a Loyola throw. See some more of the fans. They're lined up against the fence. There's not many seats to speak of on the bleachers as come way off the line there, Brendan Graves. And a flag was up while that was happening. So offside the call on Loyola. Again, good ball there by Brian Silver. It's going to take a few of these over-the-top balls to maybe cause the Bowling Green back line to drop off a little bit and to relinquish some of this pressure that they've got on Loyola. It's also good to note that it seems like they're lined up in a three center back formation, which is allowing their outside mids to really push forward and get high up the field, opening up those diagonal balls that you've seen played quite often so far. Torres heading it forward, comes back for Eli Shope. Kusumano goes airborne, Rambler throw. to have you with us, the A-10 on ESPN. And that'll be a foul whistled on Deweso, trying to get around Apononu, who we've said a bunch of times so far has been very strong on that uh, right back side defensively. Yeah, he's really anchored that, that right center back position so right far this back, game. Right. Yeah, and it's been, it's been tough for Loyola wingers to get by him so far. Certainly a little bit more responsibility when you go with the three center backs back there as opposed to maybe traditional four. Yeah, I mean, what it does is it, it gives you a lot of advantages going forward because it allows, you can see the, th the three center backs, how widespread Wide. they are right now, and it opens up options further up the field. But on the flip side of that, you're way more susceptible to a counterattack, and I think that's what Loyola's been trying to take advantage of. Not too much success with it so far, but that's what you're seeing with those early balls over the top, and they turn Bowling Green over. We'll probably get a hydration break at the next uh, chance. I'd like to make sure it's a, a natural situation instead of just blowing the game dead. There's Bowling Green working over the halfway line here. A more patient yeah, situations we've seen from them. Looks like Loyola is kind of just resigned to give up some some possession right now, sit back, again, wait for that opportunity maybe to turn Bowling Green over and encounter. And, and there's another one of those diagonal balls that they keep keep hitting. Anaya with a what terrific a move. move to loop it towards the six, heading it in the air as Mitchell kept alive in the box and an opportunity and a save by Jilson, denying Eli Shope. Another great save by Simon, but man, what a I mean, that was, I think, a 50 or 60 pass sequence that led to that chance for Bowling Green. Take a look at the ending sequence. Looked like it took a little deflection there on the cross coming in. That was a great header to show here to give him this chance. And Jilson helped out as well by Lucas Ender. <laughs> Looked like the ball maybe kind of got stuck under Shope's feet a little bit. He couldn't get his feet sorted to get a shot off quick enough, but great chance for Bowling Green. Anaya with the in-swinger, headed first by Silver. Volley attempt by Shope, he whiffed on it. And the Ramblers clear it out from the box. So yeah, that was a prime opportunity for Shope. So Loyola fights off a shot and a corner kick. That time down the field, Quinton Blair. A lot of space here, this will curl out of bounds and now we should get that Hydration break, we will, with exactly 20 minutes and 30 seconds left in the first half. A hydration break here on the field. Bowling Green and Loyola Chicago are scoreless here on the A-10 on ESPN. Welcome back to Loyola Soccer Park. In the midst of a hydration break here with Bowling Green and Loyola Chicago. Knotted up at zero. Scott Sudikoff, Ryan Walker, back 
here with you on a day that is in the high 80s, so the hydration breaks are most certainly necessary. A few moments ago, Ryan, we saw Bowling Green, best chance overall to score in this game, had a shot that was taken by Shope that was saved. Then on the ensuing corner kick, a chance that Shope had as well for a, a first-time volley attempt that he wasn't able to get a good shot off on either. But uh, Ramblers have, over the course of this first half, evened out the play a little bit, right, as you've seen? Yeah, I think they've slowly played their way into the game, but I still, if I was Steve Bodie, I'd still want a little bit more. I think Bowling Green has slowly been constricting the field as the game has gone on. They've been moving players around. They've been possessing the ball far better than Loyola, and it's causing them problems. I mean, like you said, we just saw before the hydration break two of the best chances of the game for the Falcons, and so it'll be interesting to see if, if Coach Bodie used that uh, hydration break as maybe a mini mini chalk talk, mini coaching session to, to give, give the guys a, a little bit more information on what he wants out there. So play will resume here with Bowling Green having a throw in. Ramblers have a substitute waiting to come on. We'll have to wait until either a Rambler throw in, corner kick or any goal kick. The substitution rules at the college level, which sometimes need to be reminded they're very different compared to most other levels. Of yes, <laughs> very different. So we are back to action. The man waiting to come on is Jason Ibarra, number 11 for Loyola, a senior. He's playing the middle of that three center back formation is Josh Erlinson, mentioned his brother. Drafted by the Columbus crew after an all-Mac first team season last year for the Falcons who reached the second round of the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1997. Slipping down going after that was Nichols. Kept in along the end line though. That was Nathan Masters. Yeah, that was great work by Nathan Masters to keep that ball in bounds. And again, another Tricky pass played over the top that's been tough for Loyola's defense to deal with. Great vision. On the far side, that's uh, Mayor Didich, who came off the bench on Friday and played 28 minutes, but the freshman now making his first career start. Here we go. This is an opportunity for Loyola to break now. Gates. Torres runs onto it. Moving up ahead as well as Oscar Dueso near the top of the box. Drop back to Andrew Mitchell. He was the freshman of the year in the Valley when he entered the seed. Here's a shot by Becerra, but cutting off the angle nicely was Brandon Graves. Didn't give Becerra a lot of uh, space here as he came out to the edge of the six. Yeah, great ball there by Andy Mitchell. It all started, though, with Fabian's run. He uh, took off on a diagonal, pulled the center back out of position, and uh, almost got on the end of that to score. Becerra had four goals last year for the Ramblers, has 12 in his career, was three-time all-conference. While the Ramblers were in the Missouri Valley, that'll be a foul whistled on Torres for Loyola. Yeah, and that was easily Loyola's best chance of the game so far, and that's something that Becerra can provide, is that, that speed over the top, and it was a great pick out by Andy Mitchell to, to see the run and put a ball into a space where he could get onto it. Bowling Green program kind of hammered home the fact two NCAA tournaments in a row, but the success, recent success, we'll say at least dates back to 2018. Give you a stat that might help uh, hammer that home for you after see what happens here in the attacking third for the Falcons. They've lost 20 games since 2018. No. Not a bad number at all. No, that's certainly not bad. Considering you're looking at uh, five full seasons. Yeah, if you told me I'd play in college and take 20, 20 losses and, uh, in five seasons, I think I'd take that. 13 of the 20 losses have been by one goal to show how even much closer. Yeah, I mean, they're clearly a very competitive team. Even in the losses that they are taking, they're, they're making it close. Shope, going to drop it back. Goes out for a Bowling Green throw deep in the attacking area. Eric Nichols is in his 14th year as the Bowling Green head coach. 
two-time MAC Coach of the Year. And his playing days was in Columbus at Ohio State. So keeping that Ohio connection strong with Bowling Green. The throw by Apononu. Right to the corner there, and Jilson have to go over the top. Great work by Simon. Kusamano. Coming out, claiming that ball. It helps when you're six foot four as well. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly does, but he commands the penalty box great here. Comes out and grabs that right off the head. Gates. Now Cisneros. Headed out from the area. Torres tracks it back down. Silver overlapping with Becerra. Middle of the field, this is Blair. Trying to work it to the far side now. Are the Ramblers slipping down? That's tough, because that was looking like Loyola's best spell of possession so far. It just seems, there seems to be a little bit of a, of a misconnect on some of these passes. They just can't find one or one player or another on some of these possession patterns that they're doing. Ibarra still waiting to come on for Loyola and now getting ready to check in is Michael Hong, the redshirt senior defender who played 29 minutes off the bench on Friday. Hong along with Hensi, both named to the 2022 Mac Herman Trophy watch list in men's college soccer. Yeah, it's gotta feel good if you're a uh, Coach Bodie having a Mac Herman watch list candidate come off the bench for you. I mean, that's a, the sign of a very deep roster and a great, a great problem to have if you're a head coach. Less than 15 minutes to play in the first half. Again, Bowling Green doing a great job moving the ball side to side, causing Loyola to have to shift. Bounces by the penalty spot, Alberto Anaya. Couldn't keep his feet. Diagonal towards the edge of the six. Back diagonal intended for Kusumato, who got run over in the process as well. Did they have the, no, it's gonna be a throw. Trying to see if they have the flag up here on the near side, but not the case. Again, another fantastic ball by Jensen well, Lacosco. Actually, it must have been, must have been an offside call because they would let the subs in if, if it was out of bounds. So must have been offside here. Hard to see the flag on the near side of the field because we got the overflow students <laughs> on the railing. So hard to see down. So look at some of the numbers flash on your screen. Not a ton of chances, but we've seen Bowling Green now with two, I'd say, good scoring opportunities, and the Ramblers have had one. Yeah, certainly. I think Bowling Green, the, if the half ended right here, I think they'd be the happier team going into the locker room at halftime. But Loyola showed that they're playing, in, playing their way into the game slowly but surely. Show up the cross. Gates getting back defensively at the top of the area. Now looking to get the ball back from Dueso and start something up. Gates is making the run. Ball comes up a little short there. It'll be a Bowling Green throw. Yeah, and that's where Loyola needs to be absolutely pinpoint. When they're getting those opportunities to counter, you gotta be able to connect those initial one, two, three passes to, to get out and then you're on, on your way to goal. And they just haven't been able to connect enough of those passes on the break quite yet, and that's why they're the ones looking at less of the chances so far this half. Back to Jilson. Drives one. Second ball coming for the Ramblers to Reyes. They try a diagonal ball to Becerra. Bobby and Becerra. It's that matchup again with Apononu. Yeah, Apononu giving Becerra no ground there. But that'll be a fantastic battle to watch the rest of the afternoon. That sails in to Graves and goal. Yeah, Loyola did it well there. They exploited again. When you when you play a team that's running three center backs and kind of wing backs as your outside mid slash outside defenders, 
the spaces that open up tend to be the corners of the field, right? And then they exploited it perfectly there. Sarah was able to get in behind. Torres found him with a nice ball, and it, it put him in a, put Becerra in a position to go one-on-one -on -one with the defender. I'd like to see more of that from Loyola as this game progresses. Ramblers, as we've talked about, have enjoyed their time playing at home. Won seven of their last nine home games. And over the last three seasons, a 17-4-4 four four home record. Very strong challenge there by Andy Mitchell. Boys started 1-0 oh, with a 4-1 win over Bucknell here on Friday. Just the second ever meeting between these two programs. The other game, well, it was in 2005, so you really can't draw much from <laughs> that other than the fact that Loyola won, but obviously different players on both sides. <laughs> Certainly. Certainly. Different coaches as well as Nichols had not yet taken over yeah, for Bowling Green. I think you could argue both programs have uh, evolved come, come, a lot. Yeah, since. come quite a ways since that matchup in 2005. <laughs> Ryan Silver, Mark Torres has some space. space he can shoot it from that there. distance if you, if you let him. Has three goals in his Loyola career. More of a setup man with eight assists. He came off a transferring from Merrimack College. Nice overload here with uh, Billy Hensi and Becerra on the left side. Becerra decided not. Oh, there's a blast what that a goes hit. off the hands of Graves and over the crossbar. That was an well, absolute rocket. As, as I was saying. So it'll be a corner kick. Hong Ibarra. And Alfaro coming on for the Ramblers. Yeah, Off of that uh, shot by Mark Torres, who made me look good after mentioning <laughs> that he has the yeah. ability to take that shot if you give him the room. Just moments after you talking about the cannon that he possesses, he unloads one here. Love this camera angle that we have. And a fantastic save and goal by Brendan Graves. Just getting a finger to it to tip it over the bar. Corner kick from Billy Hensi here. Right-footed ball coming. Keeps it low. Running onto it, Cisneros blocked. And that's something right off the training ground right there. Blair back into the mixer, headed out. Alfaro now. Hensi gets to his left. Drops it back for Cisneros. They work together. Torres, left foot blocked. Torres almost sat down the defender right there. That was all the way back towards midfield where Silver is the lone player back right now for Loyola. Silver over the top of everybody, and Apononu will angle it to his keeper, but good rambler sequence, and now you might say that the scoring opportunities have evened up yeah, with, uh, certainly. play recently. Yeah, I'd say the last five, 10 minutes, Loyola has definitely played themselves into the game. And again, they seem to be stepping higher up the field. They, they seem to be more willing to move the ball side to side, connect a few more passes, as opposed to going for that Hail Mary ball over the top each time. They just pinned Bowling Green back over there for a solid few minutes following that corner kick. Trace Terry is getting ready to come on for Bowling Green. At the next opportunity, a high school All-American a year ago out of Bellbrook, Ohio. And Loyola just made those three substitutions as well. And I think it's, a, it's that time of the day the game where coaches are trying to bring in some fresh legs, especially on such a hot day like today, last 10 minutes of the, of the half. Bring in some, some new legs and see what they can do for you. Got to watch out for Terry offensively. He scored 34 goals his senior year last season. It's quite the scoring campaign. Kusumano. Trying to get it to Terry in the box. And Michael Hong with the uh, the shield. He just gets in front of Terry and lets that one go out for a goal kick. Yeah, great job there by Michael Hong to uh, body between the player and the ball and just let, let that one roll out of bounds. Took a little spill for his, uh, for his troubles <laughs> there too. That turf is... Got to be hot to the touch as well. With the sun beating down. And the 
they say that it's 85 to 88 degrees air temperature wise, but when you're on the field in the middle of that field, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I, I, I can. I don't. I, I don't want to totally guess, but I got to feel it. It might feel in the 90s, let's oh, say yeah. at least. Well, yeah, when you're running on around field. on a hot day on a turf field, it's, yeah, we're talking five, 10 degrees, if not more, that it, it, it feels hotter down there. Terry with the header into the box, but didn't have the right angle on it. Trying to see if Kusumato could run in on it. Another good diagonal ball, though, from these Bowling Green center backs. I've been impressed with the distribution out of the back from, from all three of them. Most notably, though, Apinanu and uh, Didic. They've both been phenomenal at picking out a pass cross field, and it started plenty of opportunities for Bowling Green. Berlinson for Bowling Green. And now Apinanu. Deflected off the Rambler there, so it should be, no, it's just straight out of bounds, so it'll be a Loyola throw. Blair. Alfaro into the box. Yeah, that was a very nifty ball by Alex Alfaro. I believe he hit that with the outside of his foot and put it in a position that I'm sure had the goalie questioning if he should come, come collect it or not. At Dueso, a step off from it. 525 remaining in the first half in this good back and forth scoreless battle. Sometimes you have scoreless games where not much is going on. This is the opposite. We've had plenty of good action. Either team is sitting back. Apononu with the left foot. In the way was Lucas Ender. Lovely bit of possession here for Bowling Green. Masters into the area. Torres there against Martinez, who knocks it out. And that'll be a goal kick for Loyola. You can just see the creativity in Bowling Green's attack. They've got a lot of players out there that like the ball at their feet. They like to find little one-twos, triangles on the field, and it's it's fun to watch. And I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure it's given the Loyola back line fits at times so far today. Abdi Faki has come on. And Alberto Anaya will get a break. He played 70 minutes on Friday. So it might be a situation where we'll get a, a quick break here and then maybe get another five or 10 minutes in the second half at some point. Yeah, after watching him for 40 minutes, I definitely can see why he was uh, named the MAC Freshman of the Year last year. Very creative player. F pops up in different spaces. So like Loyola has a chance to break here. Silver. In the middle, Hensi. This is a very well-disciplined Bowling Green team, though. I mean, look at how they just get guys back behind the ball. Everyone moving, shifting in a block. Dueso and Torres trying to set something up. Good work there by Torres. Hensi pushed down. That'll lead to a free kick right there in the middle of the park. That's a savvy veteran move there by Billy Hensey. <laughs> Quick restart. Almost had Torreya sneak it in behind. Alfaro, looked like a shot attempt that was blocked right there at the point of contact. Michael Hong. Into the corner, Silver. Curling ball to the other side of the six. Bowling Green now looking to break it through midfield. And now Bowling Green's got a chance to counter. And that's Faki who loses his footing, trying to stay with it. The sun has hid behind the clouds for the time being. That is a welcome respite for everybody here. Hong goes diagonal to the far side. It'll lead to a Rambler throw coming from Jason E. Barra. He's making his 39th career appearance today. A senior. That was another lovely ball by Michael Hong. 
Trying to play diagonal over the top. Chance here, and not a ton on it from Hensi. Yeah, it looks like Billy scuffed that shot a little bit, but another good chance for Loyola. Anytime you get the, uh, the returning player of the year in the conference, a look at goal at the top of the box, that's, that's a good sign. Yeah, Billy Hensley, unfortunately, will not be able to defend his two-time reigning <laughs> MVC Player of the Year award, but... I'm sure the, the players in the MVC are probably <laughs> 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 he'll try to, he'll happy try to, to see him go. He'll try to win it in a different conference this year. He's a third-team All-American a year ago as well, College Soccer News. Coming off his fourth career two-goal game this past Friday. So more opportunities like that, he might see Hensi bury them as Alex Alfaro slow to get up after the foul. That was a hard challenge by Apananu. Came sliding in and Alex Alfaro took the brunt of it. About to get the one minute call here in the first half in this scoreless game, Ramblers and Falcons. Yeah, this has been a great half of soccer so far. Loved what I'm seeing from both teams, and I think, oh, as Bowling Green has a chance to counter here. Abdi Faki. Ibarra with the defense. Good defending by Ibarra. Yeah, that was a right midfielder, Bar getting back to, to help his team defend in the box. I'm sure Coach Bodie loves to see that. Down to 12 seconds to go. Bowling Green looking to see they'll have the last opportunity here of the half. Alfaro onto it for the Ramblers. And that will send us to halftime in a fun back and forth affair, a scoreless game. Bowling Green, number 25 in the country, the preseason favorites out of the MAC. Loyola in their first season, the Atlantic 10. And we've had a good one thus far. Coming up on the Halftime Report, we'll get you a recap of the action thus far and the stats. We'll take a look at what the Loyola men's soccer program did to do some team bonding. And of course, we'll have a look at some replays of the action. Halftime here, scoreless on the 810 on ESPN. Loyola Ramblers Soccer is brought to you by PNC Bank, the official bank sponsor of Loyola University. And by Loyola University Health System, the official sports medicine services of Loyola University Athletics. Well, the crowd for the most part has been enjoying themselves, even in the extreme heat, 88 degrees, and then sitting in uh, metal bleachers. Probably ups that temperature to, let's say, 90. But yep. uh, they have done a good job making some noise, and they've come out in droves here on this Hustle to Hoin event. A ton of students in attendance for this game have seen a good scoreless battle so far. With Ryan Walker, I'm Scott Sudikoff. Thoughts on what we might see here in the second half between these two teams as obviously they draw up some counterattacks during halftime. Yeah, I mean, it, it's tough to say because I think if you're both teams, uh, you look at that half and think you played pretty well. I mean, it was a back and, back and forth sort of half. Um, again, chances for both teams, shots sitting at five apiece. So I, if you're the head coach of each team, I don't. I think I'd go out there and say, give me more of the same, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think Bowling Green would think that they could have had a few chances to score. They sh should have put a few in the back of the net. Same with Loyola. So you just hope to uh, continue that if you're the head coach. As Ryan mentioned, each side with five shots in the first half. Each team had two corner kicks. Three saves in goal for Bowling Green's Brendan Graves, matching what he had on Friday in a 0-0 shutout battle with DePaul. One save for Simon Jilson, who came off two saves and one goal allowed in 77 minutes played Friday in Loyola's 4-1 win here against Bucknell. So the Falcons 0-0-1, the Ramblers 1-0 this first weekend of the 2022 season. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure the uh, Falcons are just waiting for that first goal. I mean, after not getting one in their opening game of the season, I'm sure it'll be a, a huge relief if they can get one in the back of the net this half. They had 17 shots on Friday and six of them were on goal. They had seven corner kicks, but right, kept off the score sheet. It's a team that averaged 
1.7 goals per game last year, which put them fourth in the Mid-American Conference. Yeah, and the Mid-American Conference last year was a tough conference. NIU, I think, had their, their best season in program history. Yeah, they were ranked for a good, a, por a good portion of time, yep. if I remember correctly. West Virginia was another NCAA tournament team, so they were competing in a very, very strong conference last year. And for those unaware of why West Virginia would have been in the MAC, it's because the Big 12 does not sponsor men's soccer, so West Virginia, in terms of men's soccer, has had to jump around different Correct, leagues. yep. And you see, that, you see that quite a bit with... Uh, some of the larger schools that have men's soccer. I think Kentucky would fall under that. Uh, There's no SEC men's soccer either. Yep, that is also correct. Quick throw in here. Rambler trying to get his offense going. Into the box, Moscow drops it back. Hensi in a good defensive play. Good tackle Dietich. to break that up. Rambler is picking up the pace a bit there. Yeah, good play there by Alex Moskal. He had a runner at the back post, but just couldn't find him. Mentioned just the second all-time meeting between these two programs and the first since 2005. Bowling Green coming in off of two consecutive NCAA tournament appearances and two of the last three seasons, they've had double-figure wins, of course, in the 2020 dash 21 season played fewer games so maybe they didn't have a chance to get to double figures as they went seven five and one but 13 wins back in 2019 11 wins last season take a look at the foul that was called on the ramblers there on lucas ender yeah i mean not a not a lot you can say about that one lucas ender <laughs> there came in and just cleaned out the attacker good call by the ref Anaya setting up the free kick. And now a dangerous set piece here for Bowling Green. Looks like they've got a committee standing over the yeah. ball here. Shope and Lacasco as well. It'll end up being Alberto Anaya. Low driven ball towards the top of the box, headed out. I yeah, just couldn't beat that first defender. And again, Loyola looking to break as soon as they get the ball. Hapononu, good job stopping that clearance attempt. But now the Ramblers do clear it. And Moscow angling towards the middle of the field. Wants a through ball to Gates, but too yeah, much right pace. idea there from Moscow. I would have loved to see Gates maybe peel off the defender a little bit earlier. He was trying to hold his run, hold his run, wait for the timing. And they just couldn't connect on the ball through. Apononu on the field this entire game thus far after playing the full 90 on Friday as well. Play a full 90 today, that's, that's quite the accomplishment given the temperature. If anyone does today, it would be surprising to see everybody get at least a five minute break. Well, that being a goal kick for Bowling Green's Brendan Graves, who is a junior from Perrysburg, Ohio. When you look at this roster, it's, as you might expect, very Ohio heavy. Uh, looking around, you do have a good share of international players, Germany, Somalia, Brazil, Spain. Mexico's on there. And uh, Canada represented. But then outside of that, mostly Ohio. A couple Michigan, Illinois, but kept in the Midwest. John Gates continues to impress up top. He's a, a relentless worker. He has no problem making run after run, even if he's not winning the ball, and he seems to be harrying the, uh, the Bowling Green center backs quite a bit to start this half. And it looks like Loyola, uh, maybe as a, uh, as a correction to the first half, are, are coming out and they're stepping up a little bit higher. I think in the first half they were kind of resigned to allowing Bowling Green to possess and do what they wanted with the ball in their back line. Seems like they've stepped their line up and they're trying to, uh, again, cut cut the amount of time that those center backs have to pick out passes. Into the 51st minute now. In this scoreless affair. 1,163, the attendance 
for this game today at Loyola Soccer Park. And it is believed to be, we don't have full confirmation on it, but believed to be a Loyola Soccer Park record. And right, I mean, when you look at the seating available, the fact that we got overflow, people standing around and behind the goals, it's thinned out a little bit during halftime, a little bit. Most of the crowd has stayed, but yeah, you got to think that number is definitely, if not a record, it's close to a record. Yeah, I'm sure it's got to be close if it's not because, oh, and here's a great chance for Loyola to break after the turnover Gates. by Bowling Green. Got Moskal to his left, a little bit behind him. Drop back for Hensi. He's got some space. He'll take a shot in the save by Graves. Good shot in the end by Hensi, but I'm sure Gates would like to have that pass back. He just played it slightly behind Alex Moskal. If he leads him with that, and we'll take a look at it. Um, but if he leads him with that. Oh my goodness. Alex just, go, just getting back to live action here. You heard a, you heard a, uh, a cheer because Alex Moskal blocked the goal kick and deflected it back. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, I'm sure Brendan Graves' heart dropped there for a second mm. as that ricocheted back off Alex Moskal. That could have easily ended in the back of the net. You don't see that often or at all. And that's the type of pressure that Loyola, we weren't seeing from him in the first half. They, we don't think we saw anyone get remotely close to the, uh, the goalie to apply any sort of pressure. So they're definitely stepping their lineup and trying to make things a little more uncomfortable for Bowling Green to start the second half. Now we're gonna have a stoppage with 37.51 in Moscow being talked to by our head referee, Khalif Al Ladafe. Yeah, no nonsense from him. He's trying to uh, cut the back talk out as soon as he uh, hears it. So just had a quick word there with Moscow, who I'm sure sure had a few things to say back to him. Positive, though. Uh, always in a, positive. In a, ki in, a kind, <laughs> in a kind and nice tone. It's always positive on the soccer field. Ball remains airborne there. Silver swipes it out. And it cleared it, it cleared that on the, one under the roof. Of the on the roof <laughs> of the little apartment complex that's right behind the fence there. There's a <laughs> and bounce down. Just don't break any windows or Loyola University will be sent to Bill. <laughs> I refuse to believe that in the history of this this field that there hasn't been at least one broken at some point in time. It's like a soccer ball, you really got to have a, a <laughs> good miles per hour on it to that is true to break a window because yes, it will have some give to it. It's not like a softball. Of course, a softball field here as well as Jilson. He's trying to counter quickly. Gets it to Gates. Took too big of a hop over Gates. At five foot nine, I was hoping he'd be five foot eleven at that <laughs> point. May have been the difference. Good recognition, Sa though, by Simon Gilson. Same could be said for us. We would hope for a couple more inches. Yeah, exactly. Good. I'm sure I had that thought a few times when I was out there <laughs> playing on the field. I was going to say, though, that was good recognition by Simon to uh, start a counterattack quickly. He was looking to get the break on. And, and we're seeing, again, a, a little bit of uh, the same pattern as the first half. Loyola is fine not being on the ball as much, but when they get it, they're immediately looking to get runners forward. And they've got two two guys up top in uh, Alex Moskal and, and John Gates that can, can really challenge back lines. Erlinson over to Apononu. Apononu playing in his 34th career game in his 28th start. Now here on the near side. Nathan Masters is a senior from Sylvania, Ohio. Again, good organization by Loyola. Shifting as a group side to side. Not allowing many balls to be played through them. Anaya had it rejected. Here's another chance for them to counter quick. Blair. Gates lets it go, lets it go through purposefully as Hensi was coming up from behind. Hensi now trying to break down his defender. Cisneros, curling ball blocked, came up a bit high there on Anaya. Good job keeping the arms tucked. There's a slight argument there, I think, for handball from some of the Loyola guys. But I think it was in a natural position. 
Yeah, if you keep, you keep those arms to your side, you won't get that call. It's that ball for Cisneros, who come catching on the screen right now, but he's looking back at that uh, Torres who delivered that ball. He wanted that ball looped in mm -hmm. the air. I think a Instead little bit sooner turf. as well. I think he, uh, the recognition was there on the on the ball, but it was played just a tad bit late. So I actually wonder if, if Julian Cisneros might have been off sides, even if he had received that. Goal kick from Brendan Graves. But that is how Loyola likes to play. I mean, that's an outside back. It's getting forward and testing the back line of Bowling Green. Mayor Dietrich, freshman from Germany, making his first career start today. That dino ball is cut off. Gates locked up. Gates looked like he was wrestled to the ground there and no call from the ref. With Sergi Martinez. Ramblers win it back. Great hold up play there by Alex Moskal. Now they just gotta get runners forward. Torres. Right puts it to the middle to Hensi with space. Fires one and Graves pops it up into the air for himself. But second time that Graves has had to deal with Billy Hensi here in the second half. This one, I'd say, a better opportunity than the last one. Yeah, good switch of the play there by Torres. Billy Hensi finds himself in honestly the most open space he's had all game and was able to line up a shot. Yeah. Fortunately, put it straight at Graves. And that camera angle, you could see a decent portion of the net there to aim for if you're Hensi. And substitutions for the Ramblers early here in the second half. Benny Hoffman has come on for the first time, and back in is Fabian Becerra. And it looks like Becerra is now playing on this right side as opposed to last half when he was playing primarily on the left. So unfortunately we won't be able to see him and uh, Apononu go at it. <laughs> see Gates getting an early rest here in the second half, so he'll be ready for the stretch run. There's a save by Jilson, a rebound, and getting some help. I believe that's Ender who got there. Nope, check that, that was actually Silver who was able to get to that loose ball and help out his keeper, Jilson, after this shot attempt. Yeah, good shot, kept it low, made it difficult for the goalie, and I thought for a split second there that that, that was going in the back of the net. All right, back to live here off the corner kick for Bowling Green. Ramblers do a good job defending it. Bowling Green set to make a change here at their next chance. Jake Virgin will be coming on to see his first action of the day. Erlinson. Yeah, I mean, you can see a notable difference in the pressure that Loyola is applying in this half as opposed to last. So Sergi Martinez, who was in his second season with Bowling Green after transferring from the University of Hartford. University of Hartford, an athletic program that's dropping down to Division Three after being Division One, so a lot of players electing to move on from the university. A tough situation there in Hartford for many involved. And we got a whistle, stops play, and a foul against Bowling Green. Yeah, a couple of hard challenges there in the air. Last one whistled for a foul by the ref. So this free kick should be a lot further back than where the ball is currently, and that's where they'll get it. We are in the 60th minute of play. Torres chips it to the top side of the box. Loyola with numbers in the box. And the cross blocked out by Silver, or Silver's cross Silver. gets blocked out, leading to a corner. Yeah, again, another good opportunity, and all these are coming from 
when they uh, dispossess Bowling Green in the midfield and they're, they're able to get their heads up and get runners into the box and, and find opportunities to counterattack. Again, Loyola is perfectly content to allow Bowling Green to move the ball around the back side to side, but as soon as they try to, to play a ball that breaks any sort of line, Loyola usually is converging on it, and that's when they're able to turn Bowling Green over and get a counterattack going the other way. Saw Schweinert back in for the Ramblers. Billy Hensey with the corner kick here. Looking for a right-footed in-swinger from Hensey. Out to the top. Not Billy's best corner. Cisneros. Becerra. Got to get to the end line. Look for a cross attempt. We'll win another corner kick for the Ramblers. No. Ruled by the near side judge as a goal kick. Yeah, that was, that was great defending, though, by Josh Erlinson. Becerra is not an easy player to go against. Very quick first step, and he stayed with him the entire way. And watched that ball go out of bounds for a goal kick. So the Ramblers now have three corner kick chances in this game. And did not convert there. Not a ton of fouls. No, and I like how the rest from calling it. I think he's he's called a good game so far. He's trying to let him play as much as possible, but has blown his whistle when need be. All players and coaches ask for is consistency. If you're gonna let them play, let them continue to play, and if you're gonna call it tight, call it tight the whole game. Exactly. Let the players then adjust. It's when officiating goes back and forth back and forth where players are unknown exactly sure what to do. that's where the big frustration comes in when there's no consistency but you'll never find complaints from me if a ref just sticks with his methods and uh calls it like that the entirety of the match mm -hmm. yeah, just like an umpire in baseball if he's calling the low strike keep calling the low strike. <laughs> exactly no matter if it's the first inning or the ninth inning Ball's coming back towards Josh Erlinson. Serves it back towards the top of the box. And a Rambler was knocked down there, but so it's a foul on Bowling Green. Billy Hensey took a elbow to the back of the head there. And I think our referee wants to quell any possible issues there. So a quick word with Amir Didich and a little bit of a, a low five. There. <laughs> yeah. A little low five. Not a handshake, not a high five, but a little yeah. low five there. Quick to, word to and a little say, low hey, no, five. I, I got you. I understand. Ball there from Jilson. Martinez for Bowling Green. Anaya. And now Masters had it momentarily. Stepping in is Hong. He got caught up with Masters, who's called for the foul. So the Ramblers will have a free kick over the halfway line here. They don't waste any time. They're back moving it here to the near side. But Sarah curling ball and cutting it off. Yeah, that Graves was a, with uh, Dueso on the doorstep. Yeah, Dueso was lurking there. That was a good ball by Becerra. Picked his head up and tried to get an early cross into the box and, and almost found his, uh, his forward. And Graves, good on him for, for being aware of it and coming out and claiming. Through the feet of Kale Nichols. Yeah, Nathan Masters found a good bit of space right there, was able to uh, get the ball. That's Masters' ball into the box. On the turn, and that's what started that attack. Dueso racing in after it for the Ramblers. Causing some trouble there for Didich. Deflects to Becerra. Again, good pressure by Dueso, turning Bowling Green over in a tough position for their back line. Becerra. Dueso lofting it. And it's on the top of the goal. Ooh. And <laughs> when that came those, off his those, foot. Those I... look like easy plays if you're a goalie, but I don't think they are because you have to time it right if in the event that's going to sneak under that crossbar. Exactly, and I'm sure <laughs> when that came off Oscar Dueso's foot, he was wanting that one back, but it almost almost ended up in the back of the net. I mean, those are just so hard to judge as a goalie as they're 
They're hanging high up in the air, kind of spinning weird, and they're coming down right over the crossbar. Andrew Mitchell has come back on for Michael Hong for the Ramblers on defense. Going in Cisneros is a junior from Elk Grove Village, Illinois. Over the top, onside. That was not a close one. I think Brendan Graves knew what he was doing the entire way. He was able to collect that. Another good look, though, by Julian Cisneros over the top. Again, we'll have another hydration break in a couple of minutes here on the field. Give everybody a one minute, 90 second break, including us here in the broadcast booth. Not that it's about us, but <laughs> we can use the... We could certainly use it as well, though. We'll call it for us an air-conditioned break if we can, we can walk next door during the break. Not a day we're opening the windows would be very helpful, let's just say. No, not at all. <laughs> About 24 minutes left in the game, and... You can say that now as a broadcaster in the game with no more overtime in regular season college play. Tied after 90 minutes, goes in the books as a draw. Overtime will return in the postseason, but the difference will be that instead of playing golden goal, you'll play the full 20 minute overtime, allowing a team that concedes the chance to come back in overtime. If still tied, then penalty kicks. But again, that'll be conference postseason and NCAA tournament. I think I like that change as the ball gets delivered in here. Trace Terry trying to keep it in. It goes off of Good Jilson. Saved by Simon. Ball looked like it may have been out, but just like that, Loyola went into the field. Their goalie's making a diving save, and they're counterattacking the other way. Yeah, Terry that was able to get that ball towards the goal from what you had said looked like may have been out of bounds. Going back to that rule change, though, I, th I think as a former player, I really do like what they're trying to do with that. I mean, the, the college soccer season is already so condensed as it is, and so any chance you can take to, you know, remove some of the wear off the player's legs, I think is great. So taking out that that uh, that overtime period for regular season games, I think is, is fantastic, and I like what they did with that. Of course, there's the talk of going to a, call it two-season model, play half of the season in the fall and the other half in the spring as we will get the hydration break here we'll talk more about that we come back here 22 36 left to go second half bowling green and loyola are scoreless you are watching the a10 on espn No score, Bowling Green, Loyola Chicago in the midst of a hydration break here in the second half. 22-36 left overall in this game with Ryan Walker. I am Scott Sudikoff. Went to the break talking about how no more overtime in the regular season. And there's the possibility of down the line of a two-season model play half the season in the fall, the other half in the spring. Now, if that's the case, if they were to go to that, you think they would bring overtime back into the fold because then you would have less of a condensed schedule, but who knows? Yeah, no, I mean, it'll be certainly be interesting to see if that ever pans out. I know, I mean, I remember when I was, I think, a sophomore, junior in college, I mean, they were still talking about doing that at that time. So obviously no progress has been made. I shouldn't say no progress, but nothing's come about with that since then. So it'll be interesting to see if and when they ever do decide to implement that. But as, as a former player, I would be a big fan of that change. I do wonder what the breakdown would be. Non-conference in the fall, then play your conference season in the spring would seem like a, a, a pretty easy delineation to have. Yeah, I think I remember that's how they had talked about it or presented it to us when we had discussed it back when I was in college. But yeah, I mean, it, it gives you flexibility to, to really I think schedule more games if you wanted to and get more creative with your scheduling. Um, so yeah, and, and again, it, it, the biggest part about all that is it, it spaces out the season, less wear and tear for players. And again, I'm a big, big fan of that. And of course, college programs in the spring do play competitive games. They're just not fully, I don't wanna say NCAA sanctioned, because they definitely are sanctioned, but they're just not in terms of the normal regular season. So it's not as if these players would be doing anything 
completely different than they normally do. No, exactly. That's a very, very good point. Because, yeah, there's still plenty going on. You could make the argument that I feel like coaches may be opposed, to get, or opposed or against it simply because the springtime can be a time when they can really experiment, try new things. Like, that's like the off-season, right? And so they lose that opportunity. But I think in the long term, just having more time in between games and less rest for players would be would be better. This ball will... Graves will have to head it. Yeah, Graves with an interesting call there. It looked like he had some time to let that bounce and maybe pick it up, but opts to uh, pull a Manuel Neuer and head that out of the box. The final thing I'll mention about that conversation is the fact that in, in that case, if you were to go to splitting the season, you'd end up having at least having postseason play not be in November and December, where, where a lot of places here, especially, the weather does not play very nice. Certainly, yeah, certainly. I think I think there's a lot of benefits to it. And again, it'll just come down to when and if they can uh, get enough people on board with that switch. But I, I'm sure the players would be uh, thrilled to have something like that happen. I know when it was presented to us when I was a sophomore, I mean, we were all very thrilled about the possibility. Obviously, nothing ended up happening, but I think it would be a, a very player positive change. So Sarah's cross went out of bounds, so it's a goal kick. Eli Shope coming back on for Bowling Green. He's checking in for Kale Nichols. Alex Moscow back in for Loyola. As we have 20 minutes remaining in the second half of this scoreless game. I'd say the Ramblers have had the better chances to put one on the board here in the second half, that's for sure, especially with Billy Hensey, a couple of chances. Yeah, no, I definitely think Loyola has responded very well after the break. I think they, like, like I said, they've come out, they're pressing higher up the field, they're being more aggressive and stepping to things in the midfield, and they're finding the right balance of when to possess the ball and when to uh, recognize the quick opportunity to go on a counterattack. Yeah, see, this, this pressure that we're seeing right now is not something we really saw at all in the first half. And I don't know if that was just a, a coaching decision on, on Coach Bodie's part, you know, with the, the, the temperatures today, maybe just feeling out Bowling Green to kind of see what they, were, what they were looking like. And then after the break, he said, all right, let's, let's, let's step up the pressure a little bit and uh, see if we can't take it to these guys a little bit more. After today, Loyola will go on their streak of playing Chicago area rivals. Yeah, the Chicago circuit. Northwestern and UIC, the next two on the road. Of course, UIC, you could say, uh, took Loyola's spot in the Missouri Valley Conference as the Chicago area representative. The Flames now playing in the Valley and then have a game here against DePaul on Friday, September 9th, a Friday night that should bring forth a very nice crowd as well in that rivalry game as that's well offside there. Yeah, it was a good good idea though by Becerra. He uh, saw the, the play developing and made a curling run off the back line and the timing just was slightly off between him and I believe that was Andy Mitchell who tried to play that ball over the top. Bowling Green, they're going to play their next three games against Big Ten opponents. They'll have Ohio State at home and they'll play at Michigan and then home for Michigan State. Yeah, I mean, looking at Bowling Green's schedule, they, they've absolutely got a loaded schedule ahead of them for non-conference foes. NC whistle for the foul. Actually, it comes back uh, before that last touch. So free kick here for Bowling Green, Alberto Anaya. He's been standing over the ball here. Sophomore from Mexico, freshman of the year in the Mid-American Conference a season ago. He had four assists to go along with five goals. One of a couple of players on this team that was able to enroll in the spring of 2021, allowed to practice and train, not play in those spring 2021 games, but that little extra time probably helped him out in the fall season for sure. Yeah, and you see that. Anaya skips through. No touch, no, it'll be a goal kick. Yeah, I was just saying, you see that actually a lot with uh, with international players. Um, you don't see it as much with with uh, guys from the States just because the way, obviously, high school right. lines up with your then path to college. But definitely with uh, international guys. W when I was at Loyola, we had a few guys from New Zealand that went that route. So 
It's definitely not uncommon to, to have freshmen come in early. A lot of times see a freshman in early because they're such a, a whiz in high school academically that they graduate <laughs> a whole semester early. Yeah. Crowd unhappy with this exchange here leading to a Bowling Green free kick. Well, yeah, and in the case of uh, Anaya, it was it's clearly the right decision. I mean, he came in and, and hit the ground running with his actual freshman campaign. Again, like we mentioned, picking up Mac freshman of the year and uh, posting quite the uh, record of goals and assists in helping his team to that NCAA tournament berth last year. Teeing up this free kick with Sergi Martinez next to him as well. Anaya curls to the six, a header goes high. Another very dangerous ball by Anaya though. He put that right on the PK spot, kind of in that no man's land between the goalie and the back line. And he was unlucky that one of his teammates just couldn't quite get over the ball to direct that on target. Yeah, that was Eli Shope who was flying through. Yeah, I feel like if there's one guy on this field right now that scares me, if I was a Loyola fan, it'd be Eli Shope. But he's had, you could argue that was his third fairly decent chance of the game so far, and I you get the feeling that he's due here. See the changes. John Gates has returned for the Ramblers. Here's a cross, headed out. I believe was that Trace Terry that made that run down the left side and played a, a nice ball yeah. into the box. Trace Terry. Really had a chance to highlight his uh, pace there. He opened up the legs and took off down the left side before playing a lovely ball into the box. Less than 15 minutes here. Falcons and the Ramblers in this Mac versus A-10 showdown. Bowling Green, preseason number 25 team of the country, preseason favorite in the Mac. Great ball Gates. by Andrew Schweiner. Alfaro no trying one. to get there. Shielded away by Dietich. No one home for the cutback from John Gates. Ramblers, preseason number five team in the Atlantic 10 in their inaugural season in the A-10. All that really doesn't mean too much once you get a couple of months from now and see where everybody ends up. Terry with some space in the middle. Dietrich making a run to his left up the middle. Terry will play it to the right side in the box and some what contact a tackle and a tumble. by Brian Silver. Yeah, clean slide tackle by Silver knocks the ball away. It will give Bowling Green a corner kick, but the importance of this is you got to be precise with this play or you're going to give up a penalty shot. Yeah, I mean, for any... Got the ball first, you can see for it. For any younger kids watching this game, that is textbook defending in the box right there. <laughs> Obviously though, risky, but mm -hmm. yeah, fantastic Even though challenge. there was contact after, if you get that ball first, it ends up being a clean tackle. Yeah, that was a great recovery by Brian Silver and, and stopped a pretty clear-cut goal-scoring opportunity after a pretty bad giveaway in the midfield that started that Bowling Green counterattack. Looks like that is Kyle Cusimano on the corner. It's the sun now affecting our vantage point a little bit to that far side. Apanono sliding through. That's deflected again. And yeah, that was a lovely corner. bit of skill there by Apanono. First the Meg on the first defender, and then he went for a little Maradona around the second, and that's coming from a center back. <laughs> and actually, it is uh, Sergi Martinez. At the corner flag, one of the tri captains is from Barcelona. Has a very dangerous ball there into the box by Epinonu. I've been very impressed with his performance today. He's been rock solid at the back. He's spraying balls all over the place. He's been at the start of a lot of the good attacks that Bowling Green has had, and now he's kind of showing off in the attacking third as well. Long throw in here from Bowling Green. Loyola got to it first. Loose ball near the penalty spot. I think there may have been a foul there. Could have been called. But the players got to the point at the same time with that contact. Terry trying to keep it alive. 
That one looks like it'll roll out for a goal kick. Yeah, Shope could not keep it there, so. Loyola gets a chance here to collectively take a breath, and after that long throw, long throw-ins were never something I enjoyed <laughs> when I was in college. You never know what comes from those. It's madness, chaos in the box, and you see them a lot at the college level. Clock stopping here at 11.28. Referee is over talking to the Loyola side. Uh, obviously, we are not privy to what this conversation has to do with. Yeah, and it's given Bowling Green a chance to kind of huddle up here and figure out how they want to play this last 11 and a half. Oh, so now I see. So that tape on the side of the face there is to help keep the headset, I think, in place there. Oh, the okay. Referee. When I first, when I first had seen it, I thought it was, you know, they had a cut on the face, took a ball maybe to the face that uh, needed some attention. But another very strong challenge by Apananu in the back. Gates turns and faces for the chance to go one-on-one -on -one here. Around Dietrich, back diagonal. Hensi got a touch on it, but. Guess who? Apanonu's <laughs> there. That was impressive by John Gates, though. He was able to get a chance, finally, to be isolated out here one-on-one, -on -one, ran right by the defender, and played a perfect ball, cut back to the top of the box, the middle of the PK spot, I guess, where Billy Hensey was lurking. Loyola foul. Towards the final 10 minutes of this one. Bowling Green has not yet scored a goal this season. 0-0 zero, zero draw on Friday at DePaul. Loyola coming off a 4-1 win at home over Bucknell. Step up in competition from Friday to Sunday for the Ramblers. Bucknell, a team towards the bottom of the Patriot League, while Bowling Green, a birth from the NCAA tournament each of the last two seasons. Yeah, I mean, this is this is the type of game you want if you're Loyola and if you're Bowling Green, right? You want early season challenges. You want teams that are going to give you a run for your money because these are the types of games now that really help you form the building blocks for a deep run. And what a ball that was. Trying to get to it, Moscow. Graves outside of the box, plays it with his head. Again, Graves doing his best, man. Well, know your impression. Looked like all ball there. Crowd, crowd is not happy with it, but from our vantage point, it looked like that was a clean tackle. Alfaro. Alfaro didn't really argue it too much either. Silver will play it there, and Bowling Green keeps it in along the sideline. Chance developing and diving stop in the middle there by Ender. Good flick there by Billy to send Mark Therese on his way. Apononu chips to the top of the box. Jilson with Terry bearing down. Second ball, Ramblers have it. Yeah, I feel like you can just, you can sense the urgency kind of pick up in these last few minutes as we're winding under 10 minutes to go in this game. Both teams desperate to grab a goal and get out of here with a victory. And Graves has to be very precise <laughs> once again been, with Moscow there. He's been living on the edge of his box. Cisneros to Gates. Hensi trying to feed it to Moscow who is running to the top of the six, blocked out. For a corner kick, Ramblers will bring in two substitutions before this corner. And just as I expected, Alberto Anaya is coming back in the game. I was wondering when he would see his return to the pitch. Kenny Hoffman has come on for this corner kick. It's very unselfish on that play from Billy Hensey. 
see a lot of guys in that position. Would love to get a shot off. He looked to cut that back to the PK spot for his teammates. Hoffman, left-footed corner. Header attempt by Mitchell. And deflected off of Bowling Green. Wonderful delivery, wonderful curl on that cross by Hoffman. And Mitchell just launched himself at that ball. And now Hensi will take the right-footed corner. Crowd shaking our camera a bit. They're making noise in the stands. Hensi ready. Punched out by the keeper. Cisneros, oh, and at the oh post, covered up there by a defender. The ball still in the box. And then Apononu yeah, and anywhere, not taking anywhere any chances. On that, one. that was Kale Nichols playing at the post there for Bowling Green to help make sure that stayed out of the net. I believe that came, when I mean, we can take a look at it right here, I think it came off the crossbar and the post. Yeah, I think it came right off the uh, side of the goal. So Nichols may not have even had a piece of it just off the bar, but he was in a good spot nonetheless. Anaya trying to head it further away from the box, and Cisneros could not keep it settled down. Yeah, that was hit on a rope by Cisneros, and it, it looked like it was headed to the top corner. There was nothing Brendan Graves could do. He just had to watch that one and cross his fingers and hope it hit the post. Cisneros, who did have five goals last season. He's close to his first of this season. Again, Loyola turns Bowling Green over in a dangerous position. Gates, all into the box. Cisneros, chesting it to his right foot. Anaya comes to double team along with Terry. Good composure by Julian Cisneros. Terea side puts it. Blair, Blair keeps it. Hensi, out wide now. Loyola with numbers in the box here. Gates, just needs a good service. Touch, and a rebound score! <laughs> Benny Hoffman for the Ramblers, and it's one nothing. You could almost sense that coming over the last few minutes. I think Loyola was up in the pressure. They had a few chances before that. And they got numbers in the box there. John Gates put a good ball in the box. And Brandon Graves couldn't quite get his hands on it. It opened up the goal for Benny Hoffman to smash one home. Good composure as well by Hoffman. See a lot of guys in that situation sky the ball over the box. 85th minute tally by Benny Hoffman. It comes off a ricochet, you'll see here, just punched out. And then Hoffman with a left foot finish yeah, after Graves was a bit preoccupied, as you mentioned. Here's another good look at it. He takes this down wonderfully as well. Great first touch off the chest. This was the prior chance that Cisnero had. And then we have the goal, of course. That you just saw as well. One nothing Ramblers. The deadlock is broken. Well, it looks like they're ready to come for more. John Gates getting assists on the goal. 85th minute Hoffman from Gates. And with 450 and counting left in the second half, it's one nothing Ramblers. And now Loyola making a substitution, which should stop the clock here, actually. It does at 442 just under that five minute mark and having taken the lead to yes. avoid a team who's winning, wasting time by yep. slowly walking on the field. <laughs> you see that all too often on the professional <laughs> level. <laughs> Hoffman, by the way, his second career goal had one last season as a freshman. He was an all conference, uh, all freshman team performer in the Valley, sophomore from Germany. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, there's still plenty of soccer here to play. So let's see how Bowling Green answers back after being pegged down a goal. Still got a decent amount of time to work with, but in search of their first goal of the season, almost 180 minutes in. And there was a very dangerous chance. I'm not sure I couldn't quite see who that was, but they played a, uh, I think it was Nathan Masters played a very nice chip ball over the top. 
Almost got on the end of it. Less than four minutes to go. Goal in the 85th minute. Breaking the scoreless tie. Ramblers looking for a top 25 win here in the second game of the year. They were 0-2 last year against top 25 teams. Of course, one of that top 25 perennial team in the Valley was Missouri State for the Ramblers. Yeah, that was always the big rivalry over the last, I'd say, four or five years for Loyola was Missouri State. They've done a phenomenal job putting together a program that has been competing at a very high level for the last few years. Alberto Anaya, free kick here, dangerous situation for Bowling Green, looking for the equalizer. Anaya, curling it. Headed out first by the Ramblers, by Lucas Ender. Not the greatest delivery there out of Anaya. I'm sure he'd like to have that one back. But Bowling Green keeps the ball here, continue to put some pressure on Loyola. Gates blocking that service attempt by Erlinson and draws a foul on him now after that. Very good work by Gates. So a chance to waste off 15, 20 seconds here if you're the Ramblers, get the ball deep and put some more pressure on Bowling Green. Yeah, every, every foul from here on out is precious time wasted off the clock for Bowling Green. You never want to foul when you're losing. My old coach, Neil Jones, did a great job instilling that in us. <laughs> Becerra wins it to Hensi. Bumped, stays on it. Apononu just possesses Hensi from the ball. Apononu and Billy Hensi, a little extracurriculars after the play. Cusimano wide for Bowling Green. Now Terry. Cusimano overlaps into the box. Headed out by Quinton Blair. Good defensive header there by Blair. Shope has it blocked. Comes back to Shope, keeps it airborne, and now play is going to be stopped as the official thinks that ball may have been off the head of Mitchell, and I think they want him to go get uh, looked at quickly. Yes, yeah, and that's the right thing to do. You never want to mess around with anything related to the head, and he took that one right off the face, it looked like. The Ramblers will substitute, as you would assume here, with minute 46 left he's not really worth playing uh, with 10 while he gets checked out Moscow back in 146 left and this would be just a drop here for Bowling Green they should have the ball though they were in possession that's the case not a situation where Bowling Green would give possession to Loyola and at the top of the box there's a whistle and they're gonna have to Talk about this one and possibly look at it as one of the new rules in. No, it's outside the box. Okay, so don't have to worry about that. It's going to say one of the new rules is you can replay a foul in the box to see if it would be a PK or not. And now, because Bowling Green won the PK, some words from Lacasco, one of the captains. So if someone's going to talk, it should be one of the captains. He gets a yellow card. Yeah, maybe talked a little bit too much for the ref's liking, and he goes in the ref's book. Just, that was a close one, though. I mean, that you could make it's, the argument. It's where that, the contact yeah. is initiated, not where someone ends up. So. And that is right on the line. Still a very dangerous opportunity here with the set piece for Bowling Green. Clock stopped at a minute 20. You have Anaya. Walking around the ball here. Loyola lines up with what looks to be like a five or six man six, wall. Six man wall right now, extending from Hensi at the penalty spot to his left. Yeah, this distance is always tough though because it, ideally you'd like to have it maybe five yards further out. From this angle, you're trying to get it up and over the wall in the span of 18 yards. It's think, very tough. I think they may have also now carded the Bowling Green bench and Eric Nichols specifically sticking up for his players. It's been a pretty, you know, clean, well played game. Not a ton of extra extracurricular, no words, no extra pushes or shoves. It's been well played, I think, from both sides. Yeah, and I think you gotta credit the ref a little bit for that. It's been it's been a well managed game. Alright, so he's uh, just uh, making sure he's got everything down in his little booklet.
One day they'll advance to having little tablets. I would maybe just, <laughs> just to click. Yeah. Player, yellow card. Yeah. You'd imagine it'd be right around the corner, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. If not, <laughs> surprising it hasn't happened yet. Right, so you can see just a, a half a step outside the 18-yard box. So not even 19 yards out, really. It's well, of course, they have to back yep, up 10 yards from where the ball is. So they're about eight yards from the goal. And is that Moscow who was laid down behind? No, that's uh, that's Gates who was laid down behind the wall. Who I'm not sure I've ever seen that before. You actually, I've seen it more and more in the professional level, and as they. Apanono off the wall, trying to get it on the rebound was Nichols. They're able to get it out. Still in the field of play. What's the reasoning behind that? It's just to protect if the ball is going to go under the wall, because you see, you see okay. plenty of players that will okay, try to okay. aim yeah. for wow. when the wall jumps. They try to squeeze that underneath, and it's impossible for the goalie to see. So, mm -hmm. Apanono, the long throw in. Ender with the header. Apanono back into the mixer. Again, Ender the head for Loyola. And they're calling a foul in the play on Bowling Green. So it'll be a free kick for the Ramblers with only 40 seconds left. And they're going to take their sweet time with this one. Yeah, see how long the referee gives them. My guess is it probably whistled them down at about 25 seconds if this ball does not get booted. Jilson will boot it right at 25. Good win by Alex Moskal. Gates going to waste off the rest of this time. Let's it go out. It's going to be a goal kick, and the clock gets stopped here. Yeah, I, that's think, I think because Gates made the mistake of picking the ball up and handing it. He should have just kicked it out. Yeah. That would have been normal, what you normally have. But the fact that he picked it up, I think, and put it somewhere is what led the referee to make. See, I think that's what he's saying. That might have been. Don't it. pick it up in that instance. This game would be over if he doesn't pick the ball up there. It was interesting, though, because he picked it up and handed it right yeah, to Yeah, exactly. Him. But no I think possibly the referee, as soon as he saw it, whistled yeah, for it. That might be the rule. Not then. knowing exactly what he would do. 11 seconds here. Apanono. Long me. kick. Last ditch effort for Bowling Green. Lacasco lofting it into the box with three. And with two, with one. And that will do it. Loyola knocks off the preseason number 25 team of the country, Bowling Green, a team that's been to two consecutive NCAA tournaments. An 85th minute goal by Benny Hoffman, assisted by John Gates for a 1-0 victory here at home. And the Ramblers have begun the Steve Bodie era and the Atlantic 10 era at 2-0. Yeah, I mean, that was a fantastic back and forth game and, and one that I think both teams can get a lot out of early on in the season. Um, but yeah, I mean, Loyola with, with great resolve down the stretch, they, I think, looked the better team there in the second half after making some slight adjustments, maybe increasing the intensity with which they pressed. But again, just a fantastic game overall. And I'm, I have a strong feeling that we will see both of these teams later on down the road when they get to the uh, postseason play during the season. Yeah, you can fully expect Bowling Green will be there in the end in the MAC in the MAC postseason and threatening for an NCAA tournament spot. Meanwhile, Loyola, this is a good win early on for their resume because the A-10 could be a team that gets more than one team into the NCAA tournament. That's going to be it for us from Loyola here this afternoon. My broadcast partner, Ryan Walker, I'm Scott Sudikoff saying so long from Chicago where the Ramblers knock off Bowling Green one to nothing. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and are archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.